Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute, or an hour, or a day, or even a year. But eventually, it will subside, and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. The margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. You got a dream, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves, and they want to tell you you can't. Something, go get it. Here. Don't be afraid to fail. You can't always win, but don't be afraid of making decisions. You have to believe that something different can happen. He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. That most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Deep down, dig deep down, ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Figuring out for yourselves what makes you happy, no matter how crazy it may sound to the people. Make a choice, like you just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide. Why not? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? see why, why, why can't I do that? What did you say to the kid? It ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Get up. Get up. Get up. And don't ever give up. We can stay here.
is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you, you the people have the power, the power to create machines, the power to create happiness, you the people have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Now, what are you going to do? Because limits, like fears, are often just an illusion. With all the differences in our lives, we have at least one challenge in common. We all must deal with adversity. There may be periods, sometimes long ones, when our lives seem to flow with little difficulty. But it is in the nature of our being human. Most people half-ass half their life all the time. I knew they were gonna get tired. They were gonna get down. They quit improving themselves. They start sleeping in. I'm not gonna do that stuff. I'm gonna get up early. I'm gonna keep getting wide. I'm gonna stay relentless. I would say start where you can start. You know, if, if something announces itself to you, which is a strange way of thinking about it, as in need of repair that you could repair, then hey, fix it. If you fix a hundred things like that, your life will be a lot different. Fix the things you repeat every day. You get up, you brush your teeth, you have your breakfast, you know, you have your routines that you go through every day. Well, those, those probably constitute 50% of your life. The things you do every day, those are the most important things you do. You know what separates the winners from the losers in this world? The difference is that winners are honest with themselves about the effort that they put in. They don't blame anything but themselves when they don't get the result they are after. Instead, they recognize their own lack of effort, they take responsibility for it, and they fix the fucking issue. Only you can hold yourself back from getting what you want. Everybody can stand up and do good when everything is all good. Everybody can smile when the sun shines. Everybody can do right when everything is going right. Everybody can do that. But everybody can't face opposition, adversity, and challenges and say, I've been waiting on you to come. I'm going to embrace you, and I'm going to figure out a way to use you because you will never turn me into a different person. You will never make me a person that people don't recognize before the adversity. Everything in you is telling you to stop, to give up. Every muscle is aching. And you're saying to yourself, I can't do it. I can't do it. And you just keep on and you keep on and you keep on. It seems like you're moving at slow motion. And then eventually when you break through, then you know it's like done and you're on automatic and you glide on in. And you know it's there. You know you're going to get to the finish line. At the end of the day, if you really wanted to be wealthy, you'd say, how did I do today? Mm -hmm. Did I make the right choices? Was I ethical? Was I purpose-driven? Was I, was I, was I interested in making a difference? Was I fair? Was I tempered? Uh, did I really think before I spoke? What, what did I remember reading about that book, about that person that did it? How'd I do? And if you said, I, when did I fall from grace? When did I lose it? Okay, I want that opportunity again. Mm -hmm. I want another shot at that. And I'm going in this way. What would love do in this situation? What would greatness do? And now you, you evolve your experience and somehow there's a door, there's an opening, something shifts, something changes. And now here we go, we climb another ladder and then all of a sudden there's another challenge. And then people who finally arrive at their abundance, they could care less if they're abundant. They're already knowing that they've earned the right for it. So, so there's sometimes a shortcut in the process yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, we're, if we really learn and we really get it. But the trial and error is so important mm -hmm. because not only is the person earning the right to be wealthy, but they're 
earning the right to live in worthiness, yeah. worthy to receive. Like, hey, you people, people come to our work all the time for a lot of reasons, and one of the common reasons is they want to get healthy. Yeah. And and they because okay. they're dealing with a very serious health condition. And I always say the same thing to them. Stop wanting to be healthy. Learn the formula yeah. on how to get healthy. Learn the formula on how to heal, and the healing will be the side effect of it. Mm-hmm. If you're obsessing about why am I not healed, you're still the old person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're going to become that person every day, right? Yeah. turns out that when you sit down and the people that we interview that have had significant changes, when it's no longer about their health, but they are they are out of the bleachers and they're on the playing field and they are coming up against the belief. Like one lady said, God, I, I always thought that this work really worked, that, that this, these concepts are the truth, but I never believed it worked for me. Mm. And I was in a car accident and I'm in a wheelchair. And then she made the decision that she was going to overcome that belief. Now, it was no longer about her healing. It was about overcoming the belief. Yeah. But she overcame the belief. And it showed up every day for herself. When you believe in yourself, you believe in possibilities. When you believe in possibilities, you got to believe in yourself. You don't show up for yourself. You don't believe in it. Yeah. And, and, and that's why people don't do the work. I mean, if you, you believe that your thoughts created reality, you would show up every day and create. And so a lot of people believe in their past more than they believe in their future. A lot of people fall in love or more in love with their past or romance their past instead yeah. of romance their future or love their future. It's, it's that simple. So... The initiation process of life is always going to be there. You're always going to be challenged. If, if you want to be a master, well, then you better learn how to heal someone else. And you're going to fail a lot of times. And if you think that you're a failure, then you'll quit. But if you feel like you just didn't quite ding it yet and you show up again to just ding it and you keep evolving your experience and go deeper, how much more can I open my heart? How much more can I surrender into this infinite field? How much more can I become? Can I walk as it with my eyes open? People do meditations and they have great meditations, me included. And then you get up, you open your eyes and you're back in the program. (laughs) And people wanna know why they haven't healed. And we have testimonies of people, they're speaking the truth. They said, my MS, my rheumatoid and my lupus never went away. And I had great meditations. I felt better. And then I realized with my eyes open, I was still that person. And now, next level, they're in the game of catching themselves or catching how they speak or watching how they think. They're not letting their body fall in the same emotional state to put them in the same past experience that the body's believing in. Now, this is the, this is the great part. And when a person finally breaks through from the chains, and there's a different consciousness, a freedom that happens. They look back at their past. They want to change one thing in their past because it brought them to that present moment. That's the past no longer existing. That's the freedom. So is it worth the effort? Yeah, it's no longer about healing. It's no longer about abundance. It's about who you're becoming. If you don't give your brain a reason why, like why do you want to do this? Why must you do this? Um, It won't actually wants to do the work. So if you don't have a reason why, it'll take the path of least resistance and come up with the reasons why you shouldn't faster. So that's number one. Um, Second step to refire is engage. When you set a goal, engage, immerse yourself in your goal and why you want to achieve that goal, and then get support from a group or a mentor to keep you engaged as you level up your knowledge and your skills and your behaviors. The third of her refire to rewire out of the six step process is feel. Get your emotions behind your goal. When you get your emotions behind your goal, by thinking about all the benefit of everything you're gonna gain, who you're gonna become, who you're gonna be able to help, uh, how you're growing, when you get the emotion behind it and, and, and you engage and you have your reason why, the emotion is the energy put into motion that is required to get the momentum and keep the momentum going. Humans are are unique among all life forms. If you are a believer in whatever religion or whatever spiritual part of your program, these are three excellent words, study, practice, teach. Don't neglect your studies on your own spirituality, whatever its origin, whatever your beliefs. 
Then practice, put it into practice so that number one, you become a good role model, first for your children. Then teach, pass it on. You gotta pass it on to the next generation and the next generation. What if the next generation gets a little weaker and the next generation gets a little weaker? Now the family foundation is starting to be weakened, which now weakens the nation because the nation is built up of strong family foundations. Now here's the third part. First is physical, second is spiritual, third is mental. Some key phrases on the mental part. First, the mind must be nourished. Food for thought. Bread for the head. Yes, you need a slice of toast in the morning, right, for your body, but you need a slice of cassette you put in the car system and listen and listen, let something feed your mind. Here's what I teach in one of the other seminars on the mind, and that is stand guard at the door of your mind. Don't just listen to anything and everything. Make sure that you're, you're your own best filter of what goes into your mental factory and spins out the fabric of your life and future. Stand guard at the door of your mind. Spend time, be a selective listener. 